Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, the market is up ever so slightly again. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Two point seven percent. So finally, over that two point two trillion dollar mark, things are looking nice. Uh, Bitcoin just under the fifty, kind of. Well, not just under. It's over fifty one and a half thousand, which is good, but it's under fifty two. And again, I'm really looking for that fifty two and a half thousand dollar mark to break. I think we'll probably see a little bit of resistance around about there. But look, whether that's going to hold or not, we'll have to wait and see. All right, BTC dominance actually increased ever so slightly, but we're above 50, oh, sorry, 43% now, not 53%. So Bitcoin dominance growing, which is interesting. Uh, you know, people are getting excited about Bitcoin again. And look, they're still putting money into altcoins, but Bitcoin making a nice move. One of the sort of bigger movers there, not as much as Doge and Shiba Inu, things like that have pumped a little bit. Bit of volume, which is nice. And gas fees, I mean, look at that, $10, ouch. So people are jumping all over the places at the moment with their, I'd say a lot of it's probably stable coins, honestly. Uh, stable coins now being put back onto the exchanges and people are, you know, getting into, you know, altcoins and Ethereum and Bitcoin and all that. Obviously by those movements, but I think a large part of it is stable coins moving around. All right, so as we can see, bit of a mixed bag, you know, some things up, some things down uh, and Doge, quite a nice move there. All right, what's done the best in the last 24 hours in the top 100? <sighs> there we go, Shiba Inu, good Lord, 78%. I really thought Shiba was kind of done and the fad had passed and here we go. Again, I'm not chasing it, but you know, those who do, I mean, safe moon for crying out loud. Even that's had a move. Still, it's always, I've only ever seen this at two really. On one on a couple of occasions, it was a three. On one occasion, this was a four, but that's pretty much it. And again, then we see Doge and Theta and Chili's. Look, some nice moves, which is really, really good. What about losses though? What hasn't performed so well in the top 100? Axie Infinity down. Again, they had such a massive pump. I mean, I think it was 130, 140% in seven days. So it'll probably lose, you know, let's say maybe 30, 40% of that uh, and then consolidate before it starts to move up. No guarantees and that's not financial advice, but that's generally how it works when something pumps really hard, then it's going to eventually get to a point where it's going to go down for a little while. So there we go. DYDX, uh, ICX, Luna, HBAR, Algo, you name it, Solana. Again, I bought Solana and it's only gone down the two days since I bought it. Uh, and that is always the way, you know, you, you chase something that's already pumped so much and you think, oh, this is still not a bad price to get in. And all of a sudden it does this to you. Now, that's not to say I've got given up on Solana or anything like that. But again, I didn't put that much into Solana that really, if it did completely, you know, poo the bed and go the other way and, you know, retrace back down to $60, not saying that it will, then again, I wouldn't have lost that much. It it was more based on what the possible upside may be. And Solana could still get on another big run. We'll just have to wait and see. But yep, so definitely losses. But again, overall, the market is up uh, and in the green. So that's really nice. Now we come over here, look at the Bitcoin chart. And as we can see, it's getting ever so close to that $52,500 mark. We were sitting kind of down here yesterday, just outside of this upwards channel, upwards trending channel that we've been in for a very long time. And now we have jumped back inside it. So that's what's really good, is we are back in this channel. And that's one of the more promising things. But still got to get over this. So again, I am feeling bullish at the moment. I mean, I've been feeling bullish for a long time. I didn't think any of this was a bear market. I haven't thought any of this is a bear market. But don't get me wrong, that's not to say it wasn't, you know, the thought wasn't in the back of my head, but I wasn't thinking that we were there. And hopefully, that's going to pan out. But this still could, and I hate to spread FUD, and that's not what I'm trying to do. But until this really breaches $52,500, this could still be a dead cat bounce. It's not going to look like a technical one. They're usually pretty uh, harsh, but anyway, still could be. And in all fairness, if this gets up to, let's say, 59000 and rolls over, it still could be a dead cat bounce. We can't really confirm that this is no longer a dead cat bounce until we break this. Anything short of this, you know, could be a kind of double top, 
uh, are fall over. You know, sometimes they can be really, really bullish uh, patterns and sometimes they can be really bearish. It's hard to tell. But I think there's a lot of fundamentally good news out there at the moment and we're going to get into some of that. Hence why I'm feeling pretty confident about things. Yes, it's possible that this goes lower and we're in a dead cat bounce, but the chances are just less likely at the moment. Again, I'm never offering you financial advice, so it's all just my personal opinion. But I think, yeah, the chances of this being a dead cat bounce, the higher this goes, the less likely it is. But the truth is, really, I would say around about here, we need to get above 60,000. I think if we get above here, it's almost, yeah, no, I suppose I want to be careful with that. Yeah. This is where I'd really think, all right, the chances of it being a dead cat bounce are pretty much nil, but in all honesty, it has to get above here for it to be nil, for it to be a dead cat bounce. Uh, yeah, things are looking good. Things are looking promising. But me, I've always, as I say regularly, I always have my plan for what I think is going to happen. But I always also have a plan for, okay, what happens if that doesn't happen? And I'm completely wrong and it goes the other way. What's my plan then? You know, Do I have an exit strategy? Or have I only put in a you know a little bit that you know if it goes to zero then it's not going to really matter too much to me and things like that. All right, that's the Bitcoin chart. That's the only chart I really need to look at to give me an indication of where the entire market's going because it still leads the market. Now that may not last forever, and there's definitely other charts you can look at that can help total cryptocurrency market. You know how the Dixie's going and the S and P five hundred and things like that, but. Really, this is the one I just focus on. This is the one that's the most accurate. And it's not to say that the S&P 500 tells you exactly what Bitcoin is doing. But if the stock market is not doing so well, quite often crypto doesn't do so well. Now, again, there's a, you know, varying people out there who are going to say there's very little correlation or there's you know no correlation. It definitely seems like there's correlation to me at times just not always. So again, it's a that holistic approach. It's not just the Bitcoin chart that I look at to tell me what the market's doing, but this is the one that I get the most info from. I take the most from, but then again, it's you know stories and again, the total crypto market cap and how DeFi is doing and how NFTs are doing, all that kind of stuff. That now plays a part in helping me make my decision where I think the market's going. All right, a couple of stories I wanted to go over. So Gensler confirms the SEC won't ban crypto, but Congress could. I think the chances of Congress banning it are very, very slim. Not impossible. Nothing's ever impossible and something could happen that we just don't see. And, you know, the big guys have all got together and, again, they're trying to, you know, get everyone super excited to then crash the market and kill it. Again, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm not trying to scare people, but you know, it's definitely a possibility, but highly unlikely. I think the chance of crypto ever being banned now are you know, those days are dead and buried. Regulated, absolutely, heavily regulated, still possible, but growing a little bit less likely every day. Particularly in the US. I think the US understand that, you know, with the way China's behaved, this is their way to hold that dominancy, you know, uh financial dominance around the world they really need positive crypto regulation because if they do that then they can stay at the forefront and as i've said before i actually think the us dollar being the world reserve currency survives because of crypto it won't last forever it just can't it's a fiat system i mean it can sort of last forever but you know whether it'll be the dollar the us dollar that lasts for you know another hundred years will be questionable but i do think cryptocurrency will save the us dollar in the short term at the very least maybe another cycle or two after that i think you know yeah it'll be interesting to see where the goes but gary gensler has come out and said that his uh, has confirmed that his agency doesn't have the authority or the intention to ban cryptocurrency so that the authority is very very interesting it is you know the governments and things like that and there are more and more government officials now getting on the bandwagon of cryptocurrency because there's numerous surveys out there being done all over the world and they are getting more and more positive about cryptocurrencies and politicians you know governors senators you know all that kind of stuff prime ministers deputy prime ministers presidents all that kind of stuff they need to look at what the country wants you know their uh, nations people wants and 
you know, crypto is very popular in the States. Other countries around the world growing very popular. It really is just kind of communist countries, you know, like China and things like that, that just, you know, they don't care. They own their people and can do what they want, you know, South Korea and things like that. But even that may come back to bite them at some stage, you know, in the future, whether that's tomorrow, five years, 10 years, or maybe never, we'll have to wait and see. But crypto its adoption is happening its popularity is happening it'd be very hard for governments in a democratic society to come out and say no nah, it we don't want it we're going to ban it simply because it's what their other big end business buddies want because they would have a revolution uh at some stage against them particularly if the dollar fails you know and the, the local currencies fail and we know cryptocurrencies are something that you know it's not to say they can never fail but just have been getting better and better ever since the creation of Bitcoin. And, and that's just the truth. All right, next story. Crypto asset manager uh, Arca, hopefully I say that right, or Arsa, I don't know, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. We'll go with Arca, launches first fund for startup investments. So the firm's first VC fund, it was oversubscribed above its $30 million cap. So they're only looking to raise 30 million and they had a whole lot more people come in. Crypto, as I said, the space is just, it's growing so fast, so much is happening, you know, we could go into that super cycle, it is absolutely possible, I'm not sold that it's going to happen, but I don't outright believe that it won't happen, again, every, it depends, you know, as soon as things start to look up, you start to get more excited about it and think, yep, we absolutely could go into a super cycle, and then when, you know, we go through bearish periods like we did for, you know, way back sort of here when we went through this we we're probably thinking oh no we've all been fooled and it's gonna fail and then we get super excited and then we you know again think we've been fooled it is just that market psychology but the more and more crypto sort of grows and gets you know picked up by nations and big businesses and things like that it's more likely that we probably are going to go into a super cycle but we're still a long way from that. There may be two to five percent, I think five percent will probably be pushing it, of people into cryptocurrency worldwide. A lot of people are keen on it and reading about it and want to hear about it, but still hardly anyone is in the space. So for that kind of super cycle, I would say we'd need probably 15 to 20 percent of the population using crypto. And then we could say, yeah, we're going into a super cycle from here. But the sad part is, the big money is all made before we get to that mass adoption. It's not that there's no more money to be made after that, but the big exponential gains, they will be long gone in the bigger ones. Again, new ICOs and things like that can still do amazingly, but the you know the gig is up. All the big companies are now jumping into start crypto startups. Not all of uh, the crypto startups, but all the big companies can see the big money that has been put in and the, you know, the crazy returns that they have come in. So they are taking very serious looks at you know, any kind of cryptocurrency startup. And you know, again, millions of dollars, tens of millions. Sometimes this can be you know, 100 or $2 million. So very, very interesting times. All right, Brazilian lawmaker aims to make Bitcoin a legal payment currency. There's a few places around the world that are doing this. They're not making like it legal tender, but they're making it a legal way to actually pay for things. You can use it as a payment uh, gateway as opposed to, again, making it, you know, the legal tender of the country and things like that. So Brazil making moves. So we go down here. Lawmakers in Brazil are working on establishing a regulatory framework that would make it easier to invest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies while making it tougher on scammers and hackers. Look, that is the perfect, you know, it doesn't go into you know specifics, but you know in the general sense, that's the perfect example of the kind of regulation we need. We want to regulate cryptocurrencies, you know, to not kind of kill them and stifle them and things like that. Make it easier for people to invest in them. But yes, absolutely, go after the scammers and hackers and things like that. People who are doing rug pulls, which are basically scammers, absolutely. But not crush this, you know, growing infant. Uh, industry that could just really change the world for better. We don't know it could change it for the worse. There's still always that possibility, but it really does just look like crypto is something that could truly be transformative for you know everyone around the world. But we still have to wait and see. That's you know that's not 
that's not guaranteed it's just the way it's looking at the moment plenty of things could happen again you know maybe some governments do come out and try and ban it you know maybe there's some big solar flare that knocks out nearly every or let's say every satellite in the world and then all of a sudden you know there's no internet and things like that so we there's always those possibilities but it's you know are they likely you know the solar flare thing probably highly unlikely not impossible you know meteors and asteroids and all that kind of stuff you know highly unlikely but not impossible but i like where crypto is heading at the moment there's lots of exciting things happening but you can have articles like this but they come out during times like this and it just doesn't make you feel good it's only because we're in this that we get you know articles like this and it makes us feel so much better again it's that human psyche we are such a sort of fickle bunch you know we can have what is obviously good news in front of us but if things aren't going well for us it doesn't feel like good news and then you know the vice versa of when things are really good it feels twice as good because you know everything else is going well uh, and that is where a lot of people get caught up, particularly when markets change, again, not taking profits and buying all-time highs and things like that. That's where you can really get caught out. Uh, the human emotion uh, gets preyed upon by market psychology, uh, and that is the truth. All right, moving on. So Colombia, they're now talking about possibly using things like waterfalls and that to mine Bitcoin. How... I mean, it's not even crazy. I mean, crazy is using, you know, volcanoes to mine Bitcoin. And now there's a senator over in Brazil saying, you know, we can follow in El Salvador's sort of footsteps, except they're not using volcanoes. They're going to use, you know, the big waterfalls, uh, you know, in Colombia and things like that to help power, uh, yeah, the mining you know, facilities and rigs and things like that, you know, clean green energy as they call it and, you know, the way Bitcoin is going and cryptocurrencies in general, whew, all sounds like a pretty good idea. I mean, that story, you know, we looked at yesterday, $40 million per day Bitcoin mining rigs are pulling in. $40 million a day. That's not a week, that's not a month, and it's certainly not a year. Per day, I mean, 40 million times 365 days a year, and it's probably going to go up from here. So, yeah, it'll be absolutely crazy to see where it goes. Don't get me wrong, if we go into a bear market, there won't be 40 million per day. But in general, it just keeps growing and growing and growing over time, particularly, you know, over the last 10 years, and well, 11 that Bitcoin's kind of been around, done extremely well, and the whole crypto space is just getting. You know, more and more exciting. Last but not least, fifth largest bank in the US now offering Bitcoin custody services. I said this before, this many months ago, I was saying, you watch, all these banks were very anti-crypto. We're only going back six to eight months ago. Definitely, you know, 12 months ago, they were like, you know, nah, nah, we can't do it. And it's this and it's that. And I said, you wait, they're going to change their tune. And what they're going to do is they're going to want you to store your cryptocurrencies with them. Now, I'm a firm believer in not your keys, not your crypto. But in saying that, you know, for some people at least, it's hard to hold on to all your crypto. And eventually, particularly to try and make yield and things like that, a lot of the time you're probably going to have to hand off to, you know, what you'd like to think are trusted entities. You know, BlockFi, Celsius, things like that. They are very centralized. Banks will be exactly the same, but this will be the easiest way for particularly the boomers and things like that who are just going to have too much of a hard time trying to figure out, again, seed phrases and, you know, wallets and cold wallets and hot wallets and, you know, ledgers and all that kind of stuff. It would just be too much for them. So this is how the banks last longer. And again, I, th I forget where I heard it. Someone said it today and they basically said that the reason DeFi is being held up is because banks know they cannot compete. And so what they're trying to do is get their heads wrapped around DeFi so they can then bring all the DeFi possibilities that are out there to everyone through the banks. And it gets all those who aren't crypto you know, natives and just don't understand, they're going to think they're going to get a great deal. Oh my God, they're going to give me you know, 5% or 4% interest. We haven't seen that in you know, like 10, 15 years, not as understanding that if they did it themselves, they could probably get, you know, 8, 10, 12, maybe even 15% and things like that. But hey, if it brings people into crypto, then that's the way it is. Eventually, particularly the younger generation, they know they don't need banks. It is just all the more oldies. And again, still some, you know, I'd say 
pretty much anyone who's maybe 30 years onwards are more likely to use banks if they're not into crypto at the moment and don't understand it. But I think people definitely in their 20s and teens, they won't be using banks at all. They'll be all self-custody. They'll be DeFi. Again, possibly, you know, programs like, um, you know, Compound, Aave, you know, things like that. I think they will be the way of the future. Now, whether it's either of those two or something new that comes along, comes along, excuse me, we'll have to wait and see. But the younger generation, they will bypass banks completely. They'll just see that, you know, the gains are too good outside of banks because banks are going to charge a premium for it. They always have. They always will. They're never going to work for sort of nothing. It just costs them too much money. Whereas a computer program, it basically works for nothing other than you need some people to make sure they're constantly upgrading the code when things come up. But outside of that, you don't need any tellers, you don't need any managers, you don't need any sales reps, you know, it all kind of does itself. It's not to say that you don't need a little bit of hype to go with it and, you know, find influencers and, you know, things like that. Absolutely, but not people full time who are going out there constantly trying to sell that to people. That's just not needed. Those kind of jobs are probably now... Yeah, the new sales reps, I think, will be, you know, personalities and influencers and things like that with this kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying there will be no sales rep jobs whatsoever, but the world is changing fast. It's going digital. Jobs that, you know, seemed, again, obvious, working in a bank, you know, very pre prestigious job once upon a time. Now, less and less prestigious and less and less required by people because of things like cryptocurrencies and DeFi. I mean, if I didn't have to use a bank, I would not use a bank. Then they're, 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 I won't say useless, but they just don't do anything for, uh, for me really at the moment. They're very cumbersome to try and ever get a loan from, nearly impossible at times. Whereas you can go to a smart contract and as long as you've got, you know, like, again, you can't borrow the same kind of money. They're, they're not going to really lend you a whole stack of money that they're not sure you can pay back whereas banks would home loans and things like that uh, harder to do home loans through cryptocurrencies but not impossible and maybe that is something that we're sort of yet to see that's about the only way i can see banks surviving at the moment is they would lend you that kind of money where you have very little uh what is it uh god i'm total mind blank of the deposit where you'd have hardly any deposit like a five ten percent deposit it'd be hard to go and you know into a crypto and have five thousand dollars and you know be able to borrow let's say half a million dollars that's something we don't have at the moment that is what banks can do but outside of that yeah banks they don't do much for us at all particularly again in the lending uh sorry uh interest space they do absolutely nothing all right i won't take up any more of your time that's it from me Stay safe, be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train at the moment and I'll see you next time.